Hey guys, I am here to talk to you about something so exciting. Curf. All right, it's not that exciting, but seriously. All right, so what is Curf? Curf, in regards to the laser, or pretty much anything, is essentially the material that is cut away from the width of the cutter. So in the example of a saw blade, for example, the width of the saw cuts away a portion of the material. The same is true with a laser. The laser beam actually has a width. So all lasers vary um, based on what that width is, but every laser beam has a width. So when you cut something out of the wood, you're actually removing part of the material and what's left is smaller than the whole. You understand? You know what? I think I'm gonna show you guys. I got a better way to do this. Hang tight. See? The material that's cut away. That's curved. <laughs> that's curved. Oh, no, it's not curf. I'm just hungry. All right, so you guys are getting this, aren't you? I think you are. Curf is essentially the width of the material that's cut away from the width of the laser beam, the width of a saw. So it's the material you lose. So we have to compensate for that. So how do we do that? Let me go to the computer. I'm gonna show you guys a real world example and we'll just show you how it works. You'll get it. So let's go, guys. So I'm going to create a very simple little file to show you what Curf is all about. So I'm going to create a rectangle here. And what I want to do is I want to create a circle that cuts out of the rectangle. Very simple. We're going to center and align it. So now I've got this section here. This is going to cut the circle out. But I want to reinsert this circle into the square. So I'm gonna take a copy of this, and that's the exact same size as this circle. So when this cuts out, this should fit back into here. So I'm gonna create a compound path here, so that this is, as you can see, it's you can see through it. And we'll just put a stroke on that, we'll grab them both. I always like to give a stroke of 0.5 on my files. So there we go. This circle here, is the exact same size as that one. So we're gonna cut out this and I'm gonna show you what happens when we don't adjust for curve. So I will go to the laser, cut it out, and I'll be right back. All right, just got these back from the laser. So this is the first cut. We didn't adjust for curve. So what do we got? We wanted a nice tight finish. Well, we didn't get it, did we? Kind of just falls right through. So what do we have to do? We have to adjust this guy for curve. Let me go back to the computer and show you what I mean. As you guys can see, my circle was going right through. Very loose, it's not what we wanted. We wanted a nice tight fit, but because the curve cut away part of the material, we didn't adjust for curve. So how do we now adjust for curve? This piece was going right through there. So we just want to make this piece bigger. So how do we do that? We go to object, path, offset path, and I'm going to give it this one a offset path of 0 0.01 inches. Your curve can vary based on your laser, um, based on a lot of different factors, but uh, anywhere from 0 0.007 inches to point. 0, 01 inches is usually a, a good rule of thumb that I've found. So I'm going to go with 0 0.01 inches curve. So what that's now done is it's created another outline outside of this one. So I'll just change the color here so you guys can see. So we are actually bigger. So what we've essentially done is we've adjusted for the width of the laser and the, basically the curve. So I'm going to delete the black one, the smaller one. 
we will add the stroke back. Now this circle is now adjusted for curve. So let's go back to the laser, cut it again, and let me show you guys what happens. All right, I'm done. We got our little piece here that's 0 0.01 inches bigger than the hole. So it should fit perfectly because we adjust it for curve. And look at that, nice tight finish. So curve is so important guys. If you were doing a slot and stand and you didn't adjust for curve, well your stand would just be all floppy and we don't want floppy, right? No, no one wants floppy. So it's important with stuff like that, inlay jewelry, and anything that basically requires you to put one piece of wood into another piece of wood. So one more thing guys, I'm gonna go to the back to the computer and I'm going to show you guys how to do a little piece of inlay jewelry that I did. And we're gonna adjust for curve, print it out, show you guys what it's all about. And in another episode, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a stand. But for this episode, I just wanted to show you guys and give you guys an understanding of what curve's all about. So, one more thing, let's do some jewelry. I saw this little circle fit nice and snug into the rectangle. And why? Because we added curve to it. In this case, I added 0 0.01 inches to it because that's what I find works best on my thunder and it's just a little bit bigger. So that worked out perfect. So how do we put this into a real world example such as a pendant? Um, so I designed a little cat file that I've actually drawn before to do a curve tutorial. So I redrew him, um, just a cute little guy. So that we're gonna actually want to cut this, but I want to inlay the face and I want to inlay the eye. So let's just go ahead and put a stroke on him. Now I'm gonna to have to take the face and the eye and move it out so that it can be cut separately with curve. So I'm going to release the compound path and I'm gonna select the face and the eyes and the ears because I want all that together. And I'm just gonna make a copy down there like that. So I want just the face to fit snug into what that hole here makes and the eye. So we don't want the, uh, this eye and this ear and the mouth. We just want this part here and the eye. So I'll grab those two there and I will go back to my offset path. And in this case, I'm going to use 0 0.008 inches because I'm gonna print this on the Glowforge. And I found that printing it on the Glowforge, that is the little bit of a magic number for me and my laser. So I'm gonna click okay. And as you can see, the stroke, let's give it a different color here so you can see it, is a little bit bigger than the original. So that will give us a nice snug fit when the laser removes the material. So I'm gonna delete these uh, larger versions. Now what I want is I want these to stay here, but I don't need them here. So I'm just gonna delete those here because this face is actually going to get put back into there. But we do want to leave this hole here. So this little piece will get inserted into there and this whole face here will get insert into there. So I'm going to just select all this. I'm going to create a compound path so that it's, you can see through it as you can see. And I'm going to just give it a stroke of black and there we go we've got our 0.5 points and i'm ready to cut so i'm going to save this as an svg and then that will go into the eye there and the face will go into there so i'm going to save this up bring it to the glowforge and i'll see you down in my little workroom All right, guys, we got our little pieces here. This had the curve adjusted to 0 0.008 inches bigger than this hole. So this should fit great. If we wouldn't have adjusted the curve, this would have just fell right through. 
So let's go ahead and assemble this. Oh, you see, that's when you know it sounds good, when you hear that little squeaking noise. That's the wood squeaking against the wood. So there we go. There you have it, guys. A cute little inset pendant. Hope you like it. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. You like my little pendant? Isn't he cute? So that pretty much explains Kerf and how it applies to a laser and how you can use it in different inlays. It also works with stands. Anything, like I said, where wood goes into wood. So that's pretty much it. So if you don't mind, I got a sandwich to finish.